What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a brief trading update, talking about what did I end up doing today in terms of my trading? What am I watching? What are my plans for these next couple of days heading into the middle of May in 2019? We're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as breaking down some stocks that a subscriber actually messaged me and some that I'm personally watching and keeping my eyes on over these next couple of trading days as this whole trade war deal, the meetup with China and the USA kind of as this whole drama, I guess you can say, unfolds because we all know at this point tomorrow, Friday, Trump is going to hit China with these tariffs unless they come miraculous, miraculously, unless they come to a trade deal, right? So before we get into the knit and grit of this video, before we get into these different topics, all I ask from you is if you enjoy the content here, you find value from the content here on YouTube, me breaking down these stocks, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. Simply just hit that like button if you enjoy the content. It really helps me out. It supports the channel, and it's quite frank telling me that I'm doing a good job here on YouTube. And if you guys want to be further connected with our community, there are two links down below in the, in the description. If you aren't, you aren't already in those uh, two communities, I advise you to join them. One being the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. Both of those very valuable communities with a bunch of helpful like-minded people. So get in there if you're not already in there. And without further ado, let's talk about it, guys. What ended up happening today in the overall stock market here? Starting off with the SPX, also known as the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly U.S. traded companies. This index ended up closing down the day about 0.3% down about 0.8 or $8 rather and 70 cents, a minimal green day, but nonetheless a green day or rather a red day, not a green day. Oh my God. My mind is boggled right now, guys. Red day for the SPX, the Dow Jones here down about $138.97, down about 0.54% on the day. Yet again, another red day for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The NQ here, the NASDAQ, ended up closing the day roughly down about 55 points here, as we can see, down 72.72 um, in terms of percent. And if we want to get an exact number of where we ended up closing, let's see here roughly 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. Yeah, pretty much roughly where we are right now, about a 0.72% uh, red day in terms of the NQ. So let's hop over to the S&P. Let's do some technical breakdowns on all these major indexes so we can see where are we potentially headed over these next couple of days? What are some things we can expect? And what are my plans pretty much with the whole, you know, state of the market right now? So hopping over here to the S&P 500, guys, on the five-day, five-minute, the, the chart that I had pulled up in the beginning of this video, it seems like the S&P is still in the downtrend, guys. We're still trending below some moving average resistances, mainly the 180 SMA, which is this uh, yellow line right here. This level has been a resistance over the past couple of trading days. Look, take a look at this. Back on the 3rd of, of May, we were at about 29.50 for the SPX, and we saw that drastic sell-off to about 2,900. And pretty much since then, we've been noticing how the moving averages, A, they saw a bearish cross with the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, and B, this yellow 180 SMA we just talked about has been a resistance since this time period, right? We see the rejection here the next day, which was actually yesterday, or actually the day after this first rejection, we fell. That was the very bloody day. We fell very drastically. The moving averages were resistances during that time period. Yesterday, Day, we had that bounce back day, right? The bounce back day after the extremely bloody day. But towards the end of the day, we saw that big sell off where I made the 
video yesterday called a bull trap. Yesterday was kind of a bull trap, right? We got rejected by the 180 SMA, and it turned out that it was a bull trap, right? Today, we opened up very aggressively to the downside. We hit about 28.36 at the lows, which is crazy because we ended up opening or closing rather at about 28.80 roughly. So we were down, you know, 40-ish points towards the beginning of the day today. And from there, we ended up scaling all the way back up to where we closed at about 2870. But we're still under that 180 SMA here, struggling to get out of it with that level being a strong resistance still, guys. But nonetheless, you know, Today's volatility was crazy. We gapped down. We filled the gap back up pretty much, right? A 30, 40 point move to the upside, followed by a 30 point, 40 point move to the downside. Quite a volatile day here in the SPX. And if we're going out on some longer term charts here, you know, it seems like we are maintaining that 2855 level of support, which was an old resistance from back in the end, towards the end of March in 2019. So keep an eye on these levels as tomorrow rolls in, like you guys saw in the title of this video. The title was something like, things can get ugly tomorrow, could potentially get ugly with what's going on, right? China and the U.S., they're currently in um, the talks of a trade deal, negotiating, who knows what's going on, but Chinese officials, executives, they came here from China, and it's all going down right now, guys, pretty much. Real time, everything is going down. So do I think it can get ugly? I sure think it can get ugly tomorrow, guys, because there are a couple of different scenarios, right? Either Trump is going to, you know, nail in the tariffs that are going to go up from 10% to 25%, and this can have a huge heavy weight on the stock market, right? People might start selling off drastically. This can end up tanking the stock market, right? But let's say they miraculously come to a trade deal, which is scenario B, for example, right? Let's say they do come to a trade deal. This could send up the markets like crazy, right? They could send up the markets to all-time highs in the matter of a week, two days, three days. Who knows, guys? Which is why I'm still being very, very cautious because, again, things can get ugly, and it's kind of a toss-up right now. I kind of want to see what's going to go on tomorrow and reanalyze and reevaluate what's the, the market going to be looking like for next week, this upcoming week, right, after we get some more insight on what's going on in tomorrow's session and tomorrow's day in general. So that kind of hints towards what I've been doing in terms of trading, right? Yesterday, I didn't do too much. Today, I didn't do too much either, to be completely honest with you guys. And I'm going to be talking about that here in a couple of minutes after we go into some more breakdowns here. So the NQ kind of broke that 180 SMA support here. We can clearly see it. This level's been a support over the past couple of months. We broke that level, right? Not too good of a sign. But the fact that we're holding this 77 level, 70 or rather 75, 30-ish level as a support, which was an old resistance from back towards the end of March, that's a good sign here, guys. That's a good sign that we're slowly potentially making a higher low here, but again, with the state of the market, these technicals might not matter because if the market, we get bad news tomorrow, it can tank and blow through that uh, support with, enough, with, with really no effort, right? It can just plow right through that support. We can be headed lower, but let's say trade deal gets done. We get some good news. This can go up like crazy. So we're just breaking down some technicals, although with the state of the market, pretty much the gist of it is these technicals, they don't have as much weight as they did when the market was in this period where we can see and kind of clearly predict, not always, but we can predict where the bounce points were being the 180 SMA, the 50 SMA, right, and and so forth, right? But as of now, those are the only key levels for the NASDAQ. So back over here to the Dow Jones, guys. For those of you guys that have been watching this one, we all know we're by that 180 SMA level of support. We've been talking about that in these videos. This yellow line that you're seeing, we sold off. 
We're maintaining it right now. It's a higher low from the previous. The uptrend is still intact for the Dow Jones. But one negative thing here is we're seeing the double top. The big sell-off has led the Dow Jones break support after support, starting off of 26,400 and then broke 26. 200 right and then broke down below the $26,000 level and now we're trending right around that 25,800 spot putting us right at this 180 SMA where if we were to break that level which again if the market goes into shambles tomorrow could happen we will be getting down to about 25,500 around 300 points lower from where we are right now putting us towards that next support level which is an old resistance from back in the beginning of February. And if we look on the one day, one minute, we actually touched that level. Believe it or not, guys, we gapped down 600 points from yesterday, um, you know, from yesterday's high to where we, um, you know, got to the low today. And that was actually the point of support that I was just talking about, 25,500. And we bounced right off of that and ended up pushing up to 25,800 on the nice rebound. So momentarily is what I'm trying to say here. We did break that 180 SMA and we rebounded quite nicely closing right above it so just keep an eye on these levels the 180 SMA here for the Dow keep an eye on 25 500 these are levels that are very very critical on a technical basis for this index so that's the overall market breakdown guys you know things can get ugly tomorrow if if there's a trade deal if there's no trade deal, tariffs, you know, things are very up in the air, which is why, again, I'm being cautious. And now that we talked about me being cautious and not really making any moves, I guess we can trans, trans, uh, what's the, what's it called? Transfer into the next portion of this video where I'm going to talk about the trading update where I actually didn't really take any trades today. Honestly, I was waiting for a TVIX move. We never ended up getting it. And let me explain where I was waiting for a TVIX move where we didn't get, which uh, which we didn't get. And we can see, again, on the five-day, five-minute chart here on the SPX, I was waiting to see a rejection of the SPX right around this level. I was watching this five day, five minute chart in specifics, uh, specifically during the trading day today. And I saw the big push up here up until this point in time, I was watching TVIX, right? I didn't take any trades. I was hoping that the SPX was going to get rejected here, slowly start to sell off so I can play TVIX on a day trade. That's what I was waiting for, right? We started to get the confirmation of the rejection here. Everything was looking great. We actually did get rejected momentarily here. I was watching it for a play, but then we got bounced back up, getting rejected again towards the end of the market. And we never really got that full-on sell-off that I was looking to see to push towards a lower low on the SPX for me to get into TVIX, right? And TVIX is a volatility ETF that's typically going up in price when we're seeing a big sell-off in the market, right? And if we see on TVIX, you know, when I was watching it, it was right around these levels, right? Right around $28. We pulled back, opened up a nice margin of profit from $28 up to around 32. That was well over 10%, right? That was about 14, 15%. So I was pretty much looking to get into this one for one last run, I can say, or I, I, I was hoping, right? For potentially one last run where I would be able to, you know, not saying it's the last run, but one nice run if it were to. To recover from this pullback point, right? Again, 15% margin. I was noticing some uh, support here. I was noticing the rejection on the SPX, but we just never got that market sell-off. We never got that big pop where I would have been able to capitalize on a nice move. So honestly, that's why I didn't end up trading today, right? Because again, I'm being cautious until the market kind of picks a further direction, right? I want this trade war news to kind of um, figure itself out, right? I want to see what's going to happen before I do take any swing positions. And I'd rather do that to play it safe. That's just my strategy. You guys may not be agreeing with me. You guys may be buying large cap stocks right now. 
that's that's cool, right? That's that's cool if you want to do that. But me, I'm mostly cash right now. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen just to play it safe, right? And this, honestly, if we do get a, a, a sell-off in the markets in the morning, you know, this could be a very good move tomorrow, right? I haven't really given up on it yet. I'm still simply waiting to see, you know, let's say the futures open up. Uh, we see they're, they're pretty red in the morning, right? This could be a good move in the morning tomorrow. So again, like I've been mentioning all, all throughout these videos, sometimes no trades are the best trades, right? I didn't want to force anything. I didn't want to take a big risk, a big gamble. I feel more comfortable just waiting and waiting and waiting, guys. So let's knock out these two um, uh, call-outs from one of our Discord members and one of our subscribers, and we'll see what's going on with these stocks. So the first one I have here pulled up on my phone is... Ticker symbol NVCR. So let's check this one out. NVCR. And I haven't checked these ones out um, uh, before filming this video. So this is literally like a real-time reaction here. So, okay. First thing I like to do is I like to go to my drawing tools and get a simple, basic, uh, support resistance tool here so we can see, you know, what are the levels on this particular stock so we can get a better understanding of what is going on. So we can see, okay, some key levels right here. Support at around $30. Okay, support here at around $42 and a support here at around $53. So I don't really want to focus on these levels because we are already out of that, right? We pretty much broke out of this channel. Now we're focusing on this next channel here from around $42 up to around $53. So this one's looking pretty solid right now, right? We're noticing how we got the double bottom on $42 where for a double bottom, guys, what that means is it's a pretty bullish reversal move to the upside, right? Just like a double top, what we saw in the Dow Jones is a bearish, uh, you know, pattern, a bearish potential reversal pattern to the downside, right? Double top here, we sold off from there. And you can see on the flip side with NVCR, we got the double bottom and we popped out, right? Another good thing I'm seeing here is we're trending above the 50 simple moving average, right? The 50 simple moving average is this green line. It's slowly starting to flatline and it's slowly starting to pop back up. So this one could uh, potentially be a bullish cross soon on these moving averages. Another thing that I'm liking is we broke out of this resistance right here, right? We notice we were trending below the 50 SMA. We broke out of that resistance. And then we broke out of the next resistance, which is roughly at about $46. So that's two resistances that we broke on NVCR. So the price action right now is definitely looking a bit bullish. And the third resistance we broke out of, which was today with a very strong 3.5% day was this 180 SMA resistance. We broke out of that. And on the smaller term charts, if we look on the 20 day, one hour, we're noticing a big reversal pattern here. We're breaking out of resistances. We're getting the bullish cross here on the shorter um, time frame, And we hit the 50 SMA here on a higher low. We bounced on top of it, made a higher high. A lot of bullish sentiment and what I'm seeing here for my analysis on NVCR. So hopping back over here, what I would like to see now simply, guys, is for us to just simply maintain the 49 level. The 49 level is going to keep us above the 180 SMA for us to hold it above, uh, hold above that level as a new support. And it's also going to hold us above an old resistance, which just happens to be around the same level at about $49. So if that's able to hold, um, you know, 49-ish dollars and we push up from there, I think we'll be able to fill the gap up to the next resistance on this one, which is up to about $52, $53. And that's going to put us, you know, right at this resistance right around here, the one that we drew. And let's say we break out of that, you know, we may be testing the higher, maybe mid to higher $50 level. So I do like NVCR on multiple different time frames here. And we're noticing it's trending up on multiple different 
time frame. So thanks for the call out. It's looking pretty good. I just I would just like to see it maintain the forty nine to fifty dollar level. That is the goal here. So the next one he ended up uh, asking me about was SFM. Ticker symbol SFM. Let's take a look at this one very, very quickly. So this is one, okay, from what I'm seeing here. Again, this is a live reaction. I didn't look at these um, beforehand. Let's take a look at a longer-term chart here. So what I'm seeing here on the three-year, one-week chart is, again, we have some support levels here. I guess I have looked at this one before because I did not just draw this trend line before this video. It must have been a while ago. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. What I'm seeing here is we're holding above that support at around, what is it, like 22-ish dollars, right? 21 to $20. That's a good sign now. The next support or the next resistance that we're seeing on, um, you know, Sprouts, Farmers, Markets, which I don't, I don't really know much about the company. I'm just breaking down the technicals here. The next resistance we're seeing is around $25. So it's safe to say on the, on the longer term chart here, we're trading between $20 and $25. Dollars. Let me quickly extend that. And if we're hopping back to the 184 hour, you know, although we are holding the $20 level of support, what I'm not liking here is that we're still downtrending on the smaller, not really the smaller, I guess it's smaller than the three year, but the 184 hour chart here, the half year chart, we're still trending down, right? We're not really seeing a breakout, a breakout pattern above moving average resistances. I guess you can say we did get a breakout of the 50 SMA, which is a good first sign that we want to break out, that the stock wants to break out, but we need to break out of the second resistance here being that 180 SMA. And let's say we break that, right? That's going to be a pretty bullish reversal pattern to the upside. This kind of reminds me of Tesla, right? The same scenario here. I want to touch, I want to play Tesla if we break out of the moving average resistances. At that point, that's going to be a pretty bullish reversal pattern. That's the same type of thing that I'm, I'm noticing here on SFM. So me personally, you know, could it reverse? Could it break right uh, to the upside? It sure could. We're kind of halfway there at this point. We're holding long-term supports, which is good, but I want to see a further breakout before potentially playing this. And let's say we get up to the 22s, uh, the high 22s again, maybe 23s, and we break out. You know, that could be a good play up to about 2480. And if we're just going to, let's say, some smaller-term charts so we can see, you know, you can see what I'm talking about here. It's on the short term, um, on a shorter term chart, it is breaking out, right? We noticed on the 180 SMA or the 184 hour chart, rather, it was breaking out of the one simple moving average, but trading below the smaller moving or the other moving average, right? Which is why it's important, again, to look at multiple different time frames because each time frame is telling us a different story and you can catch some, some stocks earlier if you look at some earlier time frames and looking at this earlier time frame it does seem like it is breaking out so as of now you know on the longer term time frames it's almost at the breakout level and if we look at the smaller time frames it is breaking out so i'd wait personally until the longer term time frame breakout and from there you know maybe 23 dollars up to 24 50 25 I think that's a good move, but the fact that we are breaking out on this 20-day or 30-day chart, whatever it is, that is a good sign. So SFM, NVCR, those are two breakdowns from, again, a subscriber, a Discord uh, you know, member. And if you guys want me to break down any stocks for you, don't feel shy of messaging me on Instagram on Discord, leaving a comment on the YouTube video. I'll break down any stock for you. Again, just don't feel shy. So those are two that, again, a subscriber shouted out. Let's talk about ones that I'm personally watching. I'm personally looking at some larger cap stocks here as potential plays. So one of them is Apple. We've noticed how bad Apple has been getting beat. I think it dipped below $100 or $200 today. And we're at the 180 SMA support here. So Apple, let's say we do get a trade deal here. 
You know, Apple would be a very good bounce back play, I personally think, right? And again, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I think it's important to play both sides of the spectrum. Apple is going to be a play that will be very good if the markets recover, right? And TVIX, again, the opposite side of the spectrum is going to be a good play if the markets tank tomorrow, right? So let's say the markets rebound. Apple, I'm liking it a lot, right? Another one that I'm liking a lot is Facebook, right? This one's bound to recover, especially if it's holding the 185 level of support here, right? From 185 Back up to around 195, I think that's a pretty good move on Facebook stock. Another one that did very well today, and I got some questions about it, was Roku. Roku was up $18 per share today. They reported good earnings from my uh, brief understanding. I didn't really dive too deep into them. But they ended up going up 28%, $18 on the day. In my personal opinion, guys, on stocks like this, you know, this is very difficult to go long on when it's already up 30%, right? Am I saying to short Roku? Absolutely not, right? Do your own research, make your own decisions. I'm personally not doing anything on Roku. I'm going to be watching, but all I'm saying is, Again, for me to get into a long position up here, I can't really justify that, right? Maybe if we pull back to about 74, 75, which is a massive pullback at this point, maybe I'd consider a position, but as of now, I personally think there's more maybe potential downside here than there is more upside because the stock went up 30%, but I'm personally not touching it based on the technicals that I'm seeing. It's very overbought, overextended. That kind of scares me. And as an investment, guys, you know, Roku... You know, it's going up against some of the biggest companies in the world. I personally think they're either going to get bought out eventually... You know, they might get squashed out by either Amazon, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Apple, you know, maybe Facebook, right? Maybe one of these companies buys them out or just puts them out of business. Who knows, guys? But that's my little uh, brief spiel here on Roku. Um, let's talk about some other ones. NVIDIA, the chip stocks in general have been getting squashed, right? NVIDIA, um, you know, this one's pretty much on a bearish trend right now. The, the 50 estimates crossing below the 180. I'm not really interested in playing this one. You know, we'll just take a look at some other ones. You know, uh, AMD, this one's breaking key support levels right now. You know, Micron, you know, these are all that have been getting killed over the past couple of days. And it makes sense, guys. China trade war has a bunch of impact on these for sure um let's take a look so crude oil gold gold is still at that point where it's looking to break out right keep an eye on this potential breakout above the 180 sma this yellow line that you're seeing if gold breaks out this can be a very good move especially if the markets sell off tomorrow so keep an eye on gold keep an eye on jnug these are ones that i'm definitely watching so i'm going to end off the video here guys if you enjoyed this video Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, follow the Strive Smart Instagram if you want more updates and if you want to be connected with me, the brand in general. Follow my personal Instagram, all of those are linked down below. And if you want to be connected with us on a further basis, the Strive Smart Discord, Strive Smart Facebook group, those are down below in the comments or the description rather as well. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all enjoyed it, found some value in it. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of your night. Peace out.